There we go. Welcome to Longbourn Literary Society, Society of Papers broadcast episode number 64. I am Zoe Burton and I'm here with Lini Brown. And today we're going to talk about our favorite podcasts. Um, but first, I think Lini has some quotes. I saw them on in our Longboard Literary Society group that she mm -hmm. might share with us. And then we're going to share our news. And then we're and then we're going to have our discussion. At the end of that, I have some reminders for you. So go ahead, Lini. All right. Um, let me get the sharing screen up here. I look so lovely on this. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I look so lovely. Oh, well. Okay. I try. Is it sharing? Um, it's still looking at me. Yeah. It takes a minute to switch over. So it should be flipping over because I just clicked on the right screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, feed your brain or remain the same, which is, I think is a good one. Yes. Um, you've always got to be, you always have to be learning. You can't just stop. You stagnate and then you start to die, right? Right, exactly. Okay, then I had, educating yourself does not mean that you are stupid in the first place. It means that you are intelligent enough to know that there is plenty left to learn. Mm -hmm. I um, like learning. I do too. I do too. I don't like homework, but I like learning. Right. <laughs> and then we have anyone who has grown mentally, physically, or spiritually knows that growth is not found in comfort. So true. Yeah, definitely Pain true. Painfully true. <laughs> <laughs> At times, yes, definitely. Yes. There we go. That should, there, back there to me. Are. All right. Well, I will, since I'm here, um, say hello to Kimberly, because I see that she has said hello to us. Um, and then my news is very short this week, which is kind of unusual for me, but that's all right. <laughs> um, I was away for a few days, a couple of days, just kind of getting back to it now. I did a little bit of writing. I wrote a bit on persuading Miss Mary and on the other one called Her Secret Bow. Yes. So I, I wrote on those and I finally got the print copy of the Dash of Darcy and Companions Cottage Collection 2 um, onto Amazon. I had it up there and was trying to get through it, but it had said something like box set on the cover and um, you can't have box set on the cover um, because people who are buying it are expecting than to get it actually in a box in a set um, so they won't let you use box set or bundle or anything like that on the cover so i'm sure one person complained because Probably. one person actually thought that's what they would get yeah <laughs> yeah so um that's taken care of now and it is up there and i did put a link in the the show notes for that um Let's see. Yeah, it was just just this week. Just this week, yep. Let's see, I've been away, so it feels like it was a long time ago. And um, just this week <laughs> that his um, or her secret bow started posting on Tuesday. There will be a post for that coming up this next week on my blog on Tuesday. However, because I was away, I'm not sure how many other posts are going to be there and I know that there won't be a Thursday story post because I didn't get to write on Thursday I was away on Thursday and I don't want to stress myself out because you know oh I'm behind so yeah you know, I'm just going to take one week off um, from posting that I will be around I will, I'll be at work that day but um, I was not at work this past Thursday so I didn't get to do the writing um, and hello to Marsha as well and I think that is actually everything for me that I can think of at this moment. Um, I don't think there was anything else. Okay. So, your turn. Well, it's, it's my turn to be a little wordy. Yeah. Um, I didn't do a lot of writing this last week either. Um, Cause you know, last Saturday, both uh, Kimberly and Marsha both know, and you, you know, but people who are watching later might not know. Um, <laughs> that I went to see George Strait last Saturday. And I was, mm. as a matter of fact, at 3.06 p.m. 
last Saturday, I was sitting in the stadium. I don't know what it's called. The Horseshoe, I think, is the nickname. I don't know its official name. Sorry. Um, in Ohio State University watching Ray Lynn sing. Mm -hmm. And then George Strait was at 9 o'clock, a little after 9 la that night. And I was it was a very long day. And I screamed myself hoarse and sang almost every song of George Strait and about half of Blake's because they were old ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it, it took I, I had a day to get ready and no work got done on last friday no work got done saturday because i was at the concert and no work got done sunday because it it's three hour a three to three and a half hour drive to get home and then i was i was i was dead beat i got like four hours of sleep because <laughs> the air conditioner in the hotel room kicked off at some point and that woke me up and then i was done um so I, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep. When you go to bed at 1.30 in the morning and the air conditioner kicks off at 5.30, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, we we walked like 10,000 steps on Saturday. So no mm. story got written. It just didn't happen. And no story got written this week. The, the week got away from me. I spent most of the week catching up. I don't even really know what I did. Honestly, I think I went and got allergy shots on Monday or Tuesday. No, I went and got allergy shots on Friday. I don't even know what I did this week, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I caught up on blog posts, and other than that, I just don't have any clue. Um, but I did have three blog posts this past week. Um, I had a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday post. And then um, Thursday evening... I spent getting a couple of Monday posts ready. And then yesterday, nobody was around yesterday because <laughs> Lini was on vacation and Rose was doing, you know, family things. And well, keeping her kids occupied. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did, I got two, no, I think on my, on Thursday, I did two Monday posts and I prepared two inspirational quotes and then on um yesterday i i scheduled the inspirational quotes and i wrote two wednesday posts and i did a bunch of other stuff too but i i don't really have any clue what it was but i did was busy working all day um so i have two weeks of those three posts the plan was today to write before our broadcast and uh, enough of one story for two posts. Well, that did not happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I said in my newsletter, that was an ambitious plan because I was supposed to write a couple hours before the post this, and I'm supposed to write two hours between church and the Xfinity race tomorrow. So we'll see. But I, well, instead of watching the truck race tonight, I think I'll just sit here and try to write. Mm. Um, but the thing is, you know, and we've talked about this before, you, when you've been away from writing, you know, <laughs> you don't do it every day. Then I have to go through all these mental gymnastics to get back into the story. And then I'm stressed because I should, I mean, I should have, I'm stressed because it should have been done. Both these stories I'm working on should have been done. And they're just not. I mean, there's there's grass mowing and all this other crap. And, and I know it's excuses, but sorry. I'm just frustrated. Um, so I'm going to write tonight and I'm going to try to write tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see. Um, then the big, the big drum roll news. Um, I made the decision to take my two Regency series, the promises series with, which is I promise to and promises kept and the Darcy marriage series, which is Darcy's wife search, Lady Catherine impedes and Caroline's censure. I'm going to put those five books in. I put them into one box set <laughs> i call it a compilation on the cover it's, it's a comp com compilation of five books to purchase it outright is 7.99 and i figured it up because somebody was complaining about the prices yesterday on facebook so i figured it out that's 20 dollars worth of books for 7.99 um so that's a deal um i'm also putting i've also put it in kindle unlimited i'm only going to put it in there for three months so it'll come out in mid September and then it'll go, I'll go wide with it. Um, 
And so I had to take out, cause I had it, that means I had to take down seven books from wide cause I had the five individual books mm -hmm. and then each series had its own bundle or box set. So, um, so that's available. I put that out in my newsletter yesterday too, with links and things and there's links in the show notes for it. That's my big news. Um, And that's about it. That's my big news. That was more than I've said anything in the last, what, three, four weeks. <laughs> so I'm still, I am a little freaked out, a little stressed it, and stress just makes it all worse, but whatever, we'll get over it. Maybe it's just today. I have had way too much sugary stuff today. Oh yeah. Sugar is bad for you. They, they had dark chocolate Milky Way bars at the at the checkout at the store. I went to the store today, folks, on a summer okay. Saturday in the middle of the day. Okay. And in this town, that means you're insane. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's when all the campers and tourists and that is all out. And I, I'm telling you, you couldn't even get into the parking lot. And I drove instead of walking because it was raining. I should have just sucked it up and got wet. <laughs> But you'll have it. But I did. I did, was able to pull straight out because there's a couple spaces with no cars. So I just pulled straight out, right out, and then I went a long way home. So, which means <laughs> instead of going left and then doing another left and then left into my driveway, I went right and quarter mm -hmm. way around the square and then right and right and right and right into my driveway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I went to the store today too, actually. Had to pick up a couple of things. Um, the things that I went there for, of course, they didn't have. Of course. Um, so I had to get something different. And then I forgot one of the things that I wanted to get. I also had to mow the lawn, finish mowing the lawn this morning because I'd left it for a couple of days because I was away. Um, we have a rechargeable battery type mower and it was long grass this time because we let it, you know, right. at the beginning of the season, we usually let it grow a little bit and kind of recedes itself a little yeah. um gets really i'm going to use that excuse the dandelions do really <laughs> well for all the bees <laughs> yes. uh, and so it took three battery charges well actually a little bit more than three because i had like a half charge on the one we have two batteries so we switch them out in and out um half charge on the one battery and the first battery I was using died because it was out um, by the trees that we have in the backyard and it's all oh. rooty and bumpy and, you know, takes a lot more time to, yeah. to mow it. It's not more yeah. space, but because you've got the battery running, of course it wears down. And then the one spot, there's one spot from our driveway to the shed that is just um, very thick grass. It's like the only part of the lawn that has any thick grass, but yeah. it gets really wet too. And it had rained, right? Not yesterday, but the the night before. So um, it was not dry. We were doing some mud walking there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it took a little bit more battery power to get that done too. But I got it done. Good deal. So now I can start again next week with my three days of mowing interspersed wednesday is my goal day and it's i have to do the whole thing in one day because there's just not enough dry days like non-rainy days because wednesday is not mm -hmm. going to be dry there's not enough non-rainy days in this coming week that i can divide it up so i and that's part of why i'm dreading it because it's going to have been two weeks and all that but you yeah. know yeah i'm we have our forecast looks pretty good for at least the first part of the week, but like I always, oh, I forgot to click over to you when you were talking. Whatever. Well, that's okay. <laughs> my, Nobody needs to see me. <laughs> like I told my husband, the the part that um, I really care about the most that gets done, you know, if there's not going to be enough dry days, it's just the front. Right. That's the back I can put up with. Right. Um, because I'm the only one really seeing that. Of course, the neighbors from either side might see it too, but it's not as, it's not as horrible as when the front right. gets long. So yeah, my, my front almost always, only one time in three years has my front not got done first. And that was when it was, that was this summer, earlier this spring when it was like knee high. Right. The back had to be done first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we were not the only ones shopping today or doing yeah. grass. <laughs> 
as in mowing the grass, not, you know, anything yeah. else with grass. <laughs> I live in Nova Scotia. You could be doing grass here. <laughs> <laughs> just go down to liquor store you can buy yourself some um yeah. <laughs> so I needed that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's uh they're trying to figure out exactly how to um regulate the edibles that are made with cannabis um oh lovely yeah because they don't your body doesn't respond to it as fast as if you're inhaling something. If you're inhaling, you pretty much get an immediate um, right. reaction to what you're, whatever it is, whether it's nicotine or marijuana. Um, but if it's in a candy form or a brownie form or whatever, it can take a while to digest through and you don't get the hit until it's kind of digested into your system and people might not think that they're getting the effect they want and they might eat too much. So, um, and they're what they're, they're too high. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I don't know what happens when you consume too much. <laughs> I don't know what that would do to you. Um, I don't know either. Yeah. But anyway, now that was completely off topic. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> it's one of those things that's going on here in Canada with the legalization of marijuana. Um, well, our topic today is about podcasts because, well, as you saw from the quotes that I shared, you know, learning is something that is a lifelong thing. It is not something you do once and then it's over with and done and you never have to learn anything ever again. Um, you really, I don't think you ever really arrive and become you know, at a place where you can stop improving either really during a career of any sort. You know, if you're playing sports, you're going to um, continue to try to improve, to get a little bit faster, to get a little stronger. Um, if you're writing, you're going to do the same thing. If you're, you know, a chef, you might have four Michelin stars and maybe you want that fifth one. You know, there's always some room. You can be really good at what you're doing and still have room to improve and to grow and to learn new things. And as technology changes, um, especially for us as writers, we have to keep up with technology and the things that are going on in the um, business world that we're publishing in because we can't just learn about stories and how to write stories if we're going to be independent publishers. We also have to know what's going on. Even if we weren't, even if we we're traditionally published, we should still know what's going on in the industry so that you know that, oh, well, there's a bit of a slow slow down in publishing right now or they're going to be looking for um, this to change or that to change. So it would be um, advisable even for those who are um, traditionally published to, to keep an eye on what things are doing and what, what sort of things consumers are looking for because the consumers today are not looking for the same thing that they were looking for yesterday and the ones that are coming up, you know, in a couple of months or years or whatever, they'll be looking for something different. They may prefer, um, they may prefer paperbacks over ebooks, or they may prefer audiobooks over um, other things. They might want things just in bite sized quantities. They may not prefer long books. They may actually want shorter books because of how it's consumed. Um, I know my, my son has some places that he reads where, you know, they post chapters and he, he reads by the chapter. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways that things are um, coming at us and changing. So we try to keep up with them um, somewhat, at least <laughs> a tiny bit. We do. Not just um, the things that are happening in the industry, but also, you know, improving story craft and how we're delivering our stories and getting better in that way as well. So I've been talking quite a while, so I'm going to actually let Zoe start by sharing what podcasts she has picked out. I know we listen to several of the same podcasts, um, so I tried to pick ones that I knew Zoe didn't listen to. <laughs> but it's hard to pick favorites because there's there's good there's so stuff many. in so many of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. They, they different focus in every one. I, was I supposed to share like show them too or just talk about them no you can just talk about them okay, okay. thank you <laughs> unless you want to share them <laughs> no, um okay. i have two well two or three 
Well, I guess we could say four, but my the one that I listen to the most is um, the Creative Pen podcast. And I haven't really listened. I've really slacked off this year. It's already mid-June. And I've kind of, you know, I've been a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she just has so much good information. She's always so cheerful and, and stuff. But she hasn't had a lot this year that I've really been interested in either. You know, because I don't write horror and I don't write thrillers. And a lot of her uh, stuff has been geared towards um, mm. that kind of thing this year. Um, and less, you know, less businessy and, or, or, you know, I, mean, I guess just more toward what she writes. Um, but she has, I've learned a lot. I'm one of her uh, patrons on Patreon. I, I think it's like $2 a month or something. Um, and she, um, she just has, she's been doing this for 10 years and she has such, uh, just a wealth of good information. And if you sign up for her newsletter, you get this uh, author blueprint thing, which I, I did. And I've read it once. Not that I could tell you right now what it says, but um, mm -hmm. I like her b because she's always cheerful and upbeat. Um, she does have some really good information on there and she's she's got the experience that you know she knows what she's talking about she's got the experience and she's got the sales um and she's written a bunch of nonfiction books aimed towards authors and she's also got what two or three different series i've read her arcane series which is very good um i've not read that that's i don't know how you classify that it's kind of like indiana jones kind of stuff mm. um but not quite I mean, it's different. It's different. But, um, and she has a, a master's in theology, which explains a lot of things. But she uses all that knowledge in those books, and that's what makes it interesting. Um, but, um, so she's got the experience. She makes six figures a year. So she's got the experience. She knows what she's talking about. My second favorite one, you got to remember when, when the reason, like I'm not a big podcast watcher. I'm not a big video person. I don't watch a, I got dozens of movies down in my living room. I have a TV and a, and a, DV, a DVD player devoted to nothing but movies. And I think I've watched three movies on it since Christmas <laughs> because I'm just not a big movie video person. So, um, I do, I, I bought a speaker, um, and I do sometimes you, you you do the podcasts on your phone or your tablet. And sometimes I'll listen in the shower or when I'm getting a meal ready or whatever. Um, the mornings tend to be devoted to listening to either the Bible on, or a sermon, but uh, sometimes other meals I might, you know, listen, but, um, and Joanna, you can watch her on, if you don't want all the, the stuff about her before and after, then you can just go to YouTube and watch the video because that's just the interview. Um, then my other person, and I like my other person, the other person I linked in the show notes is Chris Fox. Chris Fox has, the longest video I've seen him have is 20 minutes. <laughs> and for somebody who doesn't like watching videos, I thought I hit the gold mine, right? Oh, okay. Um, his videos tend to be five to 10 minutes long, generally. Mm -hmm. He just hits a topic real quick and then he goes, you know, um, and he's, he's, I don't, he, he's written a bunch of nonfiction for authors, like um, writing to market and re, what is that one? The, there's a title about re-releasing re books, relaunch your novel or something like that. Something like that. Um, so, and, and he is, I don't know what he writes either. Some science fiction fantasy ish thing. Space opera. Space opera. That's it. Okay. See, <laughs> uh, but, um, he is, it's not even that he's cute. He's not half bad looking, but he's, it's not even that he's cute. It's just that his videos are short. Right. And, and I like I like listening to him, but he he you get a lot of just gem. You get a gem is what you get. You don't get a lot of junk. You get a gem. But the other two that I didn't mention um, in twenty books, Craig Martell and Michael Anderley have a live that they want uh, that they do sometimes on Saturdays if they're not both traveling, and uh, or Sundays on the weekends. 
Um, and I will try to catch some of those. And then, wasn't there another one? Oh, the SPF people. Mm. I don't remember if you said, talked about, let's scroll down here and look. It's not, I left You didn't. Too. The SPF, um, it used to be called the Self-Publishing Formula, Formula mm -hmm. Podcast. And now it's called the Self-Publishing Show. And um, that's by Mark Dawson. And Mark Dawson made a million dollars last year writing thrillers thrillers and he's british and his voice uh, he's he's who does the the course the ads course i've been telling everybody about and he, his voice will put me to sleep <laughs> <laughs> but um they have it it isn't him that does he has a partner doing the videos named james blatch and mm -hmm. um i listen to um but they they have some good stuff on there too and it's just different author topics like what was the I don't even remember what the most recent one was. I listened to one this morning. Did you do you remember what it was? <laughs> yeah, um somebody who writes clean post apocalyptic. Yeah, that's what it is. Clean post apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> but any any topic and the reason I like these people is and, and note that two of them are British because Chris Fox is American, the other two are British. Um mm -hmm. is just that um, they have they give good valuable information and in in Chris Fox's case he he's short and I will say that um, I don't always watch the whole SPF podcast because at some point uh, and this always happens with podcasts at some point I'm like okay I'm done let's go away and do something else so yeah. but that's my that's my people look I've got us all the way to 328 look at that. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock going up, but I think I ran out of things to say. But those are my those are my my favorite is Joanna Penn. My second favorite is Chris Fox, and then um, SPF, and then the the Michael and Craig show, whatever we call it. Yeah, I don't know if they have a name for it. <laughs> I don't think they C and M is what they kind of call it. Yeah. I haven't I haven't really listened to theirs. Um, I've listened to two or three. I think I skipped about that many too. Yeah. Well, I have, I listen to podcasts a lot. Um, I don't, I don't just sit down and watch them or listen to them or anything. Usually it's when I'm doing other things. So I might put one on while I'm mowing the lawn or I might put one on when I'm cooking. I almost always have something on while I'm taking a shower in the morning and getting ready. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How can you hear that when you're mowing grass? over the sound of the mower. I have a headset on. <laughs> oh. um, it depends okay. on which, I'm not earbuds, but actual over the ear okay. um, headset actually. Well, it's not this one, but it's similar to this one where it, it's not quite as big as this, but they're, they've got the foam on them and everything okay. and they're, they've got a bit of noise canceling to them. Okay. and. My another, another thing to add to my wish list. <laughs> and my mower is battery run. So Which it's not quieter. quite as loud as if it was a gas run. I couldn't use a gas run one because I can't deal with the exhaust. It would make me sick. Right. So that's right. why we have the, the battery. But it also helps for being able to hear things. Yes. Um, I can't usually, like if I wanted to do Chris Fox, I can't because his are softer. Oh yes, that's they are, is our, so. is our softer, so I wouldn't really be able to turn it up as Sometimes high as I would be. Sometimes the pen is too soft too. Sometimes, yeah. Even in the shower, I have to have the speaker like right underneath the shower head, right by my ear, because I there can't can hear. Times. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, well, I was going to say with Chris, he's just really good at presenting things. Like he has a natural teaching ability. He's never a teacher yes. or anything, but he has it. I do know from one of his videos he said he did Toastmasters um, course okay. so he's had a public speaking course which I think really helps him to get everything that he wants to say said very concisely and you know in a good way that people can can understand and listen so I do like him too yes. um, I listened to him this morning as well mm -hmm. uh, so there's a third ton of podcasts that I've listened to here and there off and on if they have topics that I like or um, 
even if they don't, like I find I can really learn things from authors that aren't necessarily writing what I'm writing because there's always something, there seems like there's always something they say that it's like, oh, okay, that, that I could see how that applies. And the ones that I'm going to mention, um, definitely, oh, she is, Marsha uses um, Bluetooth earbuds. I don't have any of those. I, I don't like the ones that go in your ears, so I try to avoid earbuds actually. But yeah, my my son has a pair of those. Um, and I forgot what I was saying now. I had it in my head until like one second. You were talking about, <laughs> oh, see, now I've done, forgot to. Yeah, well, lots of different podcasts. So yes. Um, this morning I listened to two. I listened to the SPF show. Um, one, and I also listened to Chris Fox. I did not listen to it while I was um, mowing today because I just, my brain didn't want to really learn anything at that time because I hadn't showered yet or anything. I just went out to mow. Um, so it listened to music, which also helps me creatively. Um, one thing that I've been doing, I found on Spotify um, a devotional pod cast that I listen to in the morning. It's called Big Life Devotional. And I do that in the morning, usually even before I get out of bed, so that I can listen to that. Um, oh, and if then the would let me do something like that, I would do it. Yeah. But once he's up, I'm up. Yeah. Um, I have to be. And sure. then there's two during the week that I normally listen to, not always, but normally. Um, on Wednesday, there is the Selmar Book Show. And the reason that I like that one is there's not usually, there's usually not a lot of craft, writing craft stuff that they talk about, but they talk about news and tips. So they'll have, you know, a few tips about how to, you know, about doing things. It'll always be kind of news related. They're reporting on how someone else did something. Um, so they've read on Facebook that some, somebody, you know, used this technique and it helped them to increase their earnings over the month, you know, and they kind of congratulate them on it. Or they read an article that, you know, said this is um, how you can do this sort of thing better or whatever. And then the, the news is always, you know, some news article that they've heard heard about and then they'll discuss it and it's just very seat of the pants type discussion it's not any um professional advice or anything like that it's just kind of their reactions to things that are going on in the um, industry and it helps to hear some of those news newsy stories so that you you know what's going on because i don't like to spend a lot of time on facebook um, because I don't have it. I don't have time for that. I have other things that need to be done. Um, and well, I'm kind of feeling in that I'm kind of over Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I that feeling because they keep changing so many things. It's like, do you remember when you used to go on Facebook and see the things that you wanted to see instead of the things that Facebook thinks you want to see? Right. Yeah. And so you don't see nearly as much as you would like to, and it takes a lot of time. Yeah. And um, I have other things that need to be done. So then the other one that I usually listen to on Thursdays, I didn't this week, I'll probably go back to it at some time, is, let's see, the Career Author Podcast is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And it's a couple of horror writers. So they're just totally not my genre. They even do movie reviews sometimes, like the story plot analysis of a movie. and they're never movies that I would have watched because I'm not going to watch The Shining. <laughs> right. Know? It's just not my kind of thing. Um, right. But I can still listen to their um, analysis of it and their critique of story structure and either disagree or agree with them based on what they're saying. Um, so it, it hel it's helpful in that way. I haven't listened to too many of their movie reviews, but I am a patron of theirs just so I can if I want to. Um, then it's like a dollar a month, I think, is all it costs me to be able to see that. You can do higher um, sponsorships there, and you can get like a worksheet that goes with the movie review and stuff. But I really didn't care about that so much. Right. Um, and I will say that if you're listening to them, 
you will hear cursing and swearing because they do not filter and you know the s word and the f word yeah. get, get used so it's not it's not like thrown in there just to throw it in there it's just the way they speak i think and that's that's, that's the way craig and craig, craig and michael are too they do try to watch but it slips out yeah yeah well i don't think these guys care too much um one of them is from <laughs> somewhere in ohio oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. imagine that <laughs> i don't remember and the other one was in nashville it's like might be cleveland it might be well cleveland. that even explains more yeah um but they have <laughs> The one guy, um, Jay Thorne is his name. He's got some editing certification through the Story Grid, which is one of the ways that you can write and edit books. And so he can go through things and he'll explain things different. He's very, very, very much a supporter of outlining. He thinks, you know, everybody should outline. That's kind of the way these two, two work. And they do work together. They write books together. So obviously outlining would be important. Um, right. But I'm not an outliner. I can still right. learn things from them. Like, you know, scenes need to turn. Well, of course, I know that, you know, you have to mm -hmm. start out the scene in one place. And by the end, there should be some sort of change in direction. Um, they usually start with a a Jay's way or a Zach's hack. So there's some sort of little tip that they'll start with at the beginning. Although sometimes they've done news in the past and they might go back and do some news again, just to switch things up. And then they usually have a topic that they talk about and it's just the two of them talking about it. And um, I find it, I find it usually pretty good. Um, of course, there's sometimes there's topics they, they talk on that I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't know if I really need this and then I won't listen to it. Um, right. And there's one, there's one video that on YouTube that I just um, figured or heard about this last week or the week before just recently, it's called Heart Breathings. And I think the person who does that, I think she writes, I think it's urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's romantic, romance urban fantasy or if it's just urban fantasy i'm not sure but um i've watched a couple of her videos recently about planning and like by 90 days planning 90 days out and that's all she does she doesn't do a whole year at a time she does 90 days at a time mm -hmm. um and it was it's really interesting how she does it and i thought well that's kind of it's very similar to things that i've been doing so I I've marked her as someone that I'll probably check in on every now and then to watch some of her back videos and things see what she's doing um, I think her name is Sarah Cannon okay. um, the author that does it I did put a link to that because it was just a new one that I've discovered I don't know exactly what all of it's like or anything but like I said I've got you know i've listened to writing excuses and i've listened to another guy who does urban fantasy um i can't remember what his was called authors level up that's what it is um and then there's another ellen brock she's done videos on youtube and she's an editor so i like listening to her things you know her perspective on how a story should be put together because it's coming from an editorial perspective mm -hmm. rather than the writer perspective and then i you know that coupled with re reading things as well occasionally i get time to right. read things um i i like to do all of those things and if you ever want to keep up with what i'm doing or a few of the things that I'm doing in professional development world. I do have a Facebook group, a PD for writers like me, which I put the link in the show notes as well. And it's just, it's just where, you know, I listen to a podcast. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I'll share it. Or I read this and I'll put a quote there or look at this tool that I found that you can use to, um, help you pick out colors from a picture or, you know, whatever. So it's nothing fancy and I don't keep up a schedule with it really. I just kind of, when I remember, I share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if there's something really good, then I, I want to make sure that I keep it and share it. I'll, I'll put it there. It's kind of like a journal for me. It's not like a, not like maybe your regular group that 
um, you would have. Um, I put that in the show notes too, in case anybody is on cool. Facebook and wants to join that and see what kind of things I, I do on a regular basis. I had a hard time. I couldn't really pick a favorite because there are so many things I've learned from so many people. And the two that I picked, I listen to them regularly. I wouldn't necessarily say they're favorites. Um, like if I wasn't able to listen to them anymore, I'd be okay. I wouldn't like, you know, feel right. something. But I do listen to them frequently enough that I figured they're on my favorites list, obviously, if I <laughs> almost every week listening to them. But um, I also do Joanna Penn every week and I usually, mm -hmm. and the um, self-publishing formula every week. And whenever Chris Fox puts something out, I usually listen to that. Um, so there's, I do a lot of listening during the week. Yeah. A lot. I need, I need to do more. I know I need to do more. I need to get back in the habit. And you know, I'm sitting here thinking, you're talking about books and I've gotten a lot of books. Mm on my on my e-reader and i ordered that one with my my birthday gift um mm -hmm. in print because i think it's i like to get them in print and ebook mm -hmm. or or i do the ebook and then if i like it i'll get it in print um because then i can highlight you know right and make write notes in the margins um but it just seems like when i read i want to do reading for pleasure and so that's where i start getting i fall apart on my little you know because i got all these professional development books and i'm not taking the time to read them so and i maybe i need to and you know i don't i'm not fond of audiobooks either mm -hmm. uh, but i'm starting to think as you, and i'm listening to you talk that maybe i need to be more faithful you know and listening to podcasts and maybe even pick up a couple audiobooks if, if people do them in audiobook you know what i mean yeah i i like audiobooks some but i don't like paying the price for them to be honest right right that's true they're not cheap and even print books um in canada not as cheap as what you'll get in the u.s and sometimes if they're not through amazon and they don't have the prime option you can pay you know 15 dollars for the shipping for a book right you know it's right like, I I'd rather pay, you know, $10 for an ebook and <laughs> yeah, instead of, you know, whatever it is for the other. So, um, yeah, I'd like some of mine to be some of those books to be in audio too, because then I could do things and it's easier to, yes. it's easier to listen to a book and chop vegetables mm -hmm. than it is to read a book while you're chopping vegetables. There's yes. Risk much, to your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier, yes. And when you're eating, you know. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, I don't know. Sometimes I turn on, I have TV in the corner here, and sometimes I'll turn on a video, um, YouTube video. I do find if, like, um, the Career Author Podcast, they have it both as, you know, podcasts that you can get however you want to listen to it, or they have it in video form, too, on um, YouTube. Mm -hmm. and. I don't know why, but I just like seeing their faces, even though, you know, they're. I do too. I confess. I do too. Uh, when I did finally see their faces is like, that does not look like what their voices sound like. Like they just, yeah, totally I, not I, what I, I expected. I should probably confess that one of the reasons I don't listen to, which one, which one is it? The self, Sell the career book. author podcast is, or is it the sell more book show? Sell, sell more, more book, book show. Is because I can't stand the voice of the one guy has this really high pitched voice, hmm. and I just can't. I can't go there. Oh my gosh! I've gotten used to it. Yeah, I've gotten used to it. So, yeah, I I I do like that show. Although sometimes they, I don't agree with everything they're saying, and I usually talking back to them while they're talking um, happens. Um, yeah, I would agree with Ellen. She says that audiobooks can take too long to read even at double speed. That's true. And I don't, I don't really like um, audiobooks for fiction. Okay. I, I don't mind them for um, 
Like I had one that was on, on the cholesterol myth or whatever, which I would have liked to have had it also, you know, like a print book so I could have made notes in it, but I wasn't going to. But it was nice to listen to that because I'm not going to want to listen to that at a fast speed because I'm learning from it. But if I'm reading fiction, there are parts of fiction that I skip over. If it's yeah. just a bunch of description, I want to skip over that. Or if I, you know, don't have a lot of time, maybe I'll page through and to the end and then you'll read backwards from there. So yeah, I don't use it usually for fiction, but um, I don't mind it too much for other things. I do use audiobooks for if I'm doing Jane Austen novels. Mm -hmm. If I'm going back through them, I will listen to those because I know I know what the story is. It's, it's like rewatching something, you know, it's, and um, I've also used it for like, I still haven't finished it because it's very long and I get bored. Um, not that it's a boring story. It's a good story. Evelina. Yeah. Evelina, I haven't finished that one yet. It's like 84 letters back and forth. It's like a long thing. Wow. And I like to listen to those because it is the older English and sometimes reading the older English, it can be slower than if you're listening to the older complex structures than, you know, the reading. So I do like that. Kimberly made a good point. She said her mind wanders too much when she's just listening to something. And I've, I've realized that over the last couple of days when, you know, I told you I listened to the Bible in the mornings. And I find my mind wandering all over the place. I'm just tuning that voice right out, you yeah. know? So that is yeah. a problem. If if I'm not, you know, washing my hair or something like noise. shaving my legs, yeah. <laughs> then yeah, my brain does wander. But if I have, you know, vegetables to chop or dishes to wash or, you know, laundry to fold or whatever, then my mind doesn't wander as much. But otherwise, yes, my mind will wander. That's why in church, when I sit there and try to listen just in church, I will have, um, I have a coloring app on my phone, color by number app, and it takes no brain power to do it. But just be keeping my, my eyes focused on that and my finger moving over it, then I can hear what's being said. I suppose I could take notes too, but I don't always. You um, could. <laughs> I have done that before. If, that. if I went to a church that I, well, I actually needed to take a note, I would be taking notes because I, I, I do like to keep, you know, but the church I go to now doesn't, you know, it's, seriously, he doesn't, yeah, you don't need to take notes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, those are my thoughts on podcasts. I had a thought in, in mind. It just went out of my head as soon as you said that. <laughs> All right. Wow. But I guess that was it, huh? Yeah. I wonder if there are any um, podcasts or things that those who are watching might listen to. or it doesn't have to be a writing podcast either. No, Maybe it's just a else. crochet podcast or a... Mm. Woodworking podcast or something. Do you guys have any that you listen to? As I look down at my tablet. <laughs> um, the, monk, the Monk by Matthew Lewis. She, um, Ellen listened to that. Wow. Yeah. Forced to listen to when my eyes didn't want to continue in print. Yeah. Oh, hey. Did you have to read it or listen to it, whatever? I mean, like, was it for a class or you just chose to? You got, you know what the this funny thing to me is that when I was a teacher, when I first started out in teaching, we used to read books and put them on cassette tapes for the slow readers, the kids mm -hmm. in our class. Cause you know, I was a special ed teacher who had a hard time reading and they could follow along right and listen so maybe maybe that's part of my problem i think i think you know i think audiobook i think somebody can't read <laughs> yeah i i find that even when i was when i was teaching or even when i was um just studying if i were if i was to silently read something 
-hmm. I retained less than if I oh, see, I'm opposite. read it, you know, my mouth was moving. I didn't even have to be very loud or anything to, mm -hmm. for it to work. I could just kind of mumble my way. And I found when I was correcting papers that I could get through the stack of papers much, much faster if yeah. I was reading them sort of allowed it's not really allowed if you're whispering to yourself you know because i'd be in the back of a room and there'd be a class going on so i couldn't you know read it out right. loud. but just to um kind of as if i was reading it to a class it may go faster see I, i'm the opposite i have to read silently if i'm going to understand and i used to when i was reading to kids out loud whatever what doesn't matter what book it was history or math or you know literature I I had to stop and say, wait, I don't understand that. Go back and read it silently. And then, of course, I've said before, reading reading out loud makes me go to sleep. Listening to people read makes me go to sleep. So Le uh, it, Ellen says, it was mentioned in several Jaff books, and I was curious. J.A. mentioned it in a book. The Monk by Matthew Lewis. Mm -hmm. That must have been in Northanger Abbey or Emma because – I've never read Emma and I only made it through Northanger Abbey once. <laughs> well, if it was a Gothic, then it's probably Northanger Abbey. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's, it's, and Emma, I don't remember her mentioning that at all. Pro Emma probably wasn't a reader. She No, she read. did. She read. Did she? Mm -hmm. but I'm shocked. I don't know that it mentions <laughs> what she read okay. other than that she did read. Like, okay. I don't think there's... Northanger Abbey, we were right. I don't know that there's an, is there a Jane Austen heroine who didn't read, who wasn't a reader? Fanny was a reader. What about Eleanor? Eleanor, she, I think she read, I know Marianne. Oh read yeah, poetry. Marianne did. Yeah. Marianne um, needed more prose. <laughs> yeah, and I think Eleanor probably read the the opposite of what Marianne read. More than likely. Um, yeah. And I don't remember it mentioning Anne reading, but Anne talked about reading That's with true. Ben. Ben, what was his name? Ben Benick. Benick. And told him he suggested he had put add more prose to his daily. Yeah. Reading regimen. Yeah. I need to read. I need to read Persuasion again. I just feel the urge. Oh, I should tell you, I'm, I was just started reading for peace of mind again this morning. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really good. It <laughs> is a pretty good book. I know the author. She, she's, yeah. she's a good author. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I I enjoy Northanger Abbey, actually. Do you? I do. I, I get so far and then I'm like, oh, this is about to turn stupid. And then I, I, I that just turns me right off. I haven't, I had a hard time getting into it to read it the first time. And it actually was an audiobook. It was the first way that I was able to, to get through the novel because at, at first, I don't know, I guess I didn't, I couldn't hear the sarcasm in it. Like there's so much sarcasm in that book. Is there? Yeah. Northanger if, Abbey. Yeah. If if you hear a good narrator read it, then you get to hear the sarcasm of what is actually being said. It's not Oh, okay. It's not just straight um like the words on the page mean exactly what the words on the page mean necessarily. There's if you hear the inflection in it, I think it really helps um, for that book, especially. I've been trying to get through persuasion again. And I haven't been able to. It's you don't. You're not fond of persuasion. I get mad at Anne. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a really hard time getting past it. To be quite yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. That's okay because I have a hard time with Northanger Abbey, and I absolutely hate Emma. <laughs> I don't mind Emma. I don't mind Emma so much now that I've been through it a couple of times. Um, I can't even, yeah. I can't get past the, I can't get halfway through the first chapter of Emma. I just, I just want to slap her. Yeah. And I was great with North Ang Abbey until Catherine got stupid. And then I, then I was done. Let me throw oh. the book across the room. Oh, when did she get stupid? Like It was like about halfway through. I don't even remember, but I could see it coming. Yeah. And I said, oh, this is going to be just, just stupid. 
So <laughs> she's she's very. I can't, I can't tell you how many how many non Jaff books I've done that to. <laughs> it might take me six months to read because I'm so aggravated. Like I have to be I, in. I don't know. I just. I get in a mood and I want to read one thing and then they do something stupid and I'm like, that's it. You're done. Yeah. Like I started to read regular Regency the other day and it was going along just peachy. All of a sudden the hero finds himself imprisoned in some guy's garret. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I closed it and went through my Jaff list until I found for peace of mind. And I started reading that. <laughs> So well, at least I know this isn't going to be stupid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it isn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So anyhow. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, I think that covers our topic quite well, and we've we're just at about an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Shall I give my reminders then and we'll let them go? I would say that'd be a good idea. All right. Well, before we go, we'd like to call your attention to a few things below the video. Um, one is um, the little bell icon, which I don't see. Oh, there it is. Um, under Right. Like there's the video and then there's the title and then there's this line of like up, thumbs up, thumbs down. And then the next line has Leany Brown on the left and subscribe subscribe on the right with a bell and you click that bell mm -hmm. and by subscribing you'll get an email notice well i don't always get email notices i just yeah. get up you have to hit the bell to get the notice you have to yeah hit the yeah. bell to get the notice but um it, i know when when you log into youtube then you'll get a little a little number by your bell at the yeah. top right how many times you've been knocked out <laughs> had your bell rung um but you'll get a notice um every time we go live or leany goes live or post a video of some sort and then below that there are links um you can to, to the different shows and, and books and things we've mentioned when we were talking today um there's a link to our facebook longborn literary society there's a you can subscribe to our youtube channels and then there's links to our websites. Um, so for those things that were mentioned in the video um, that intrigued you, that you'd like to know more about, you can probably more than likely find a link to it in the show notes below the video. So that's all I had to say. So thank you everybody for coming. It was great to talk to you. Well, talk to us and talk to you. And so have a great week and we will hopefully see you next Saturday. Yeah, bye. Bye, everybody.